double mastectomy two years ago, so okay. I have a lot of tightness and pain up in here. Okay. And so since then I do boot camp and weights a couple times a week. Um, so she does lots of push-ups. <laughs> so I kind of strained my okay. back. And that, but I do always, there I said I have really tight hips and stuff, and I do have some lower back pain because I also work at the computer all day. Okay. So she sits a lot. She does boot camp, which I would like to find out a little bit more about what she does with that because that could be pretty key with <coughs> what's going on on her hip. Um, how long have you had the hip stiffness? Mm. Like, did she take a new job? Did it start from that? Or, I don't know, I just feel stiff. I had a fall. A um, lower back pain probably off and on for years. Okay. Like most of us, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So off and on for years. And if on a scale of 0 to 10, what number would you put it at? Um, it's about usually around three or four normally, just okay. even sitting. Okay. And where are we at right now? Um, no, it's ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Max? No. <laughs> So we always joke about that when we when we have students, you know, and they think they're being we're being very serious, and like, so what happens when a patient does such and such? And we're like, <laughs> you refer them out. <laughs> so no, not not that time. At least take a crack at it, right? Have your colleagues take a crack at it, then you refer them out. Okay, so usually about four. And are we having a typical day, or are you more flared up, less flared up than usual? Um, actually, it's better this week because I've had a lot of manipulation on my back and stuff, and I think it's loosened up a lot. Okay. In my so. And do you mean manipulation actually somebody popping it, or do you mean manipulation somebody working on it? Working on it. Okay. And sometimes you want to find that out, right? Because if it's actually grade five, and you know they do well with that, and you aren't good at those, then either you need to refer to someone who does those, if you, your treatment isn't working for her, or find out how to do them. Take a class. Okay. So, um, what are the other things that I need to know about you for right now? Any neurologic symptoms that you know of? Numbness, tingling, your foot kind of you know, drags on the ground accidentally? Or, you know. um, I do have some numbness and stuff down this arm. Ah, we don't care about that. This is lower extremity today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I am fine. Then I am fine. Okay, good. So, I am, so now that I, as I'm going through this eval, and obviously we're looking at lumbo uh, pelvic and hip today, but I really should be thinking to myself, like, she does have significant issues, and if she's being treated by somebody, fantastic. Hopefully she thinks it's going well. If I am seeing that it's not going well as a, another therapist or I'm working with her, let's say she's going to massage therapy. Right? I'm not going to badmouth massage therapy and be, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you pay for that. That's terrible. They shouldn't even be working on that. They don't have a degree for that, right? <laughs> Which may be all true, <laughs> but you don't present it to the patient that way, right? Because then we look like we hate everyone else. So instead of that, we say, wow, so do you really like your massage therapist? Yes, I do. I don't even know if you but yeah, I like my massage therapist. What do they do that you really like? Well, they do this part of it. Oh, that's fantastic. You know what? I'm treating you for your hip and your back. I actually could do this part for you also in addition to the massage that you're getting. I also look at what does your rib looks like and how does it interface with your, with your thorax and your thoracic spine. And if you're interested, I'm happy to do a free screen on you to find out if we can do anything else, right? So again, as a, as a bigger picture therapist, that's what I'm looking at from a uh, MSI versus IPA FMT, what I'm thinking is, I'm so glad that she's got stiffness because I want to work on her mechanically. <laughs> so, okay, so the very first thing is, um, and I don't usually do this in this order, which is why I'm going to use my notes here. Um, so a functional test, there are three of them that the IPA teaches. Um, stand up for a moment. Um, what I really want to look at, though, not one specific joint or one specific muscle right now, but how does her body respond overall? When she goes to step forward with her right leg to push a stroller or a grocery cart or open a door here, how does her body respond to that? So let's actually turn it over here. There we go. And then step forward with your right leg and just settle there like you took a step. Good. Now I'm just going to be that force for her. Don't let me push you over. And you can see right here, she breaks. Relax everything. Because it's not a preset, it's a reaction. I want to see how does she react to, not preset and brace for. Don't let me push you. Ooh, that's very interesting. We have triplanar dysfunction, right? Where she's not able to maintain that force. And even if I come on slowly, I can still push her over. And I'm pushing about with one finger, okay? And she's been instructed, and I believe that she knows what she's supposed to do, <laughs> that she can't hold that, okay? So now, don't let me pull you. Well, that's solid. I can do water skiing on her, right? <laughs> 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 she does very nicely with that. Okay, now switch legs. Good, and don't let me push you over. And a much more sagittal plane dysfunction, and we don't want her to be doing that, right? Obviously, that's very dysfunctional, and that's creating, I would assume, 
part of her problem, right? Hold the line, pull you. Now, not as solid. If you were, if you guys over here can see her pelvis is sharing to the side, you can't see it from your angle. But I wouldn't be real excited about her opening a door. Let's say she's holding something and trying to open a door backwards, pushing. Okay? And then, relax everything. There we go. Just bend your elbows like so. And what I want to do now is see how does she respond when a weight is applied externally. Don't let me straighten your elbows. And you can see, not only does she lose her balance, but she comes forward quite a bit. Right? Don't let me straighten your elbows. Now here's the fun part. No, really try. Really squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, because so now here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna tell her to abdominally brace. Activate your transverse abdominus. Come on, get that. Okay, okay. ready? <laughs> One big car, I'm gonna break her. Don't let me straighten your elbows. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> and <laughs> she's even worse with that. Okay? So from a certain standpoint, I won't go through all of the science that goes behind that, but if you have somebody actively brace into it, not only does it make them so rigid, it also makes them unreactive. Okay, So we've got different things that we would do to treat that. So my, my functional test now, lumbar protective mechanism, when I push her and stagger stance forward to backwards, does she have a good protective mechanism for her spine? Not so much, no. When I pull her, wow, is she strong. When we switch legs, again, not so responsive, right? very sluggish. She, she gets back to here while her facets are closing before her muscles go, oh, and you need me? Okay. <laughs> so that she doesn't fall over. Same thing when I pull from the back to the front. She stabilizes much better than she does front to back, but then she starts to get weak and her pelvis goes out to the side. Okay. Then from an elbow flexion standpoint, how much weight should she be actually carrying? If she's a male carrier who's got like a 40 pound bag, that's a big problem. Or she's a waitress, huge problem for this person, right? And so we have to figure out what to do with that. Okay, hey, yes? Pardon, pardon me. Um, yeah, which, what what uh, motion bothers you more in general, bending forward or bending backwards? Um, bending backwards. Okay. So you guys who are on, on my team in the MSI <laughs> system, <laughs> she's demonstrating the extension syndrome. Now, again, we can treat it in both, and we're going to in quite a bit, but, but if you remember back to my slides about extension syndrome because of her postures and things that make her a little bit worse, but extension syndromes generally have the, the strength in the back and the weakness in the front, and they have that muscle dysfunction. So just to back to April's talk, and we'll go from there. Yeah, and would you just do me a favor and just put my stuff on that side? Which side? Um, oh, this is your stuff. Oh, that's mine. Okay, yeah. so then put, um, I want uh, zero comma, so you know all four numbers in a row for RPM. Okay. So uh, zero, five, two minus, four minus. Okay. April, I have a quick question. Yes. What's, uh, maybe you'll get this later, but what's the, what are you differentiating the scheme when you do the bicep test and the pulling on the shoulders? Because you're pulling her forward, so and her spinal extensors are going to stabilize. On I, both of those motions. Right, and so I didn't you actually you? differentiate that very well for you. I'm not actually pulling forward. That's why I got all the way down here, because I'm applying a vertical force to her forearms. Mm -hmm. So although I am in front, uh, it's, I'm not pulling her forward. I'm pulling her straight yeah, down. The lever arm is still going to be forward. The lever arm is still forward, yes. And so what should be happening is that her core activation or right. core first strategy, front and back, settles that weight through every single joint, you know, thorax, mm -hmm. ribs, all the way down into her acetabulum and in the femur, all the way straight down through into her uh, arches. So that's so what's supposed to be happening. Theoretically. Challenging her lower or when you're pulling on her shoulders, you're challenging her spinal extensors more? I'm, so, so right, and so this is why I'm saying I don't necessarily want to go through specific muscles because right. when I'm pushing her, I'm, it's the entire front and in the entire back, right? It's more right, the motor. Right, right, but and it's a motor pattern as opposed to a specific muscle. Okay. So that's why it's um, a movement test, not a specific manual muscle test, like to elbow flexion test. Right, right. I guess it's a theoretically in your brain, what are you differentiating between when you do that versus that? in your mind where, where do you start to get thank you so if i'm going from the front i'm looking at how does her body load um, horizontally when i'm doing this i'm seeing how does her body load vertically and i could even just take her arms out of it stand up for a second again if i just take her arms out of it how does her body load vertically or vertically compress and test it that way and then i can just add how does her arm as in humerus scapula into thorax how does that interface then with the rest of her body okay. mm -hmm. so that's what i'm looking at 
All right, and then, so we've got um, an active range of motion testing. Come on up again. And so, let's go sideways here. Uh, may I lift this up so we can see your back? Mm -hmm. All right, so from here, active range of motion. I'm not even gonna tell you about posture and ooh, this is too high or that's too low or anything like that because right now I don't really care. I just wanna see how she moves, right? Scoliotic people, I'm never gonna get them to be perfectly aligned, right? But I can get them to maximize their movement. So, bend forward all the way as far as you can. And she's very flat, and then at the very end, she's ever so slightly rotated to the left. And then come on up, and then bend backwards. And she bends on her knees pretty nicely. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> knee bend. Yeah. Okay. Her knee and her neck are fantastic extenders. <laughs> okay? Wonderful. And then I can, I can do side bending and that kind of thing. I, I'm not worried about that. That's really the biggest thing that I need to look at right now is forward bending and backward bending. Okay, um, have a seat for a moment. And let's take a look at her actual hip socket when it's in flexion. Say so for yes. painful extension and, and no curve reversal? So, I, as you know, don't even write down if it's painful or not because I don't care because okay. most of our patients are chronic pain. So, everything hurts them. And they probably have homunculus smudging. So, if I touch them here, oh my gosh, my back hurts. So, it doesn't matter to me what movement produces or doesn't produce pain. I'm looking Limited for efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would say, so I'm going to give it a percent. So, forward bending, I would give it uh, 40%. <coughs> and it demonstrates rotation left. Okay. And then extension, I'm going to give it like 10%. Okay. Lovely. So, now let's look at if I don't let her entire body rotate, <coughs> if I only look at the hip socket into the acetabulum. Relax that for a second. Don't help me. Don't help me. There we go. So external rotation and flexion I'm not too worried about. Well, internal though. Ouch. And now watch what happens to my hand. Oh, it really pops up. Can you guys see that on the screen? Pops up. If I do, if I do this side, so we've got internal rotation dysfunction on the uh, seated internal rotation. External rotation looks lovely. Internal rotation, not so bad. Relax that. Just make sure. And internal rotation is, is also a little restricted on the side, but not nearly as bad as right I Right more than left. Yeah, right more than left. Okay. Now, does that mean that I'm going to find the same thing when I put her prone? Probably not, right? Because that's a completely different position, completely different tissue uh, loading. So lie on your stomach, please. Put this down under your abdomen. And then this on the back of your forehead. Okay, so again from here, I'm going to look at just how does the femur interact right now with the acetabulum. So when I palpate, internal rotation looks fantastic. Oh man, external rotation, not so great. So if she's someone who walks a lot for her job or stands a lot for her job, she's in a lot of trouble because she already has mechanical restrictions when she's in a, I know we're prone, but she's in a standing alignment, right? She just happens to be 90 degrees tilted, right? Okay. <laughs> I heard everyone say yes in my head. Okay. Right. And then external rotation at the hip, really not that restricted, but internal rotation definitely right there doesn't move anymore. And then Max is sitting on the right side. The but and opposite prone, on the left. Prone is more dysfunctional in, on the left. Okay. So, and Bob, can you just turn the skeleton now? So now what I'm going to do is look at external and internal rotation of the anominate. So if I look at external and internal rotation of the anominate, that's what I'm looking at. I've got one finger on the sacrum. I've got one finger on the anominate. I'm going to see, do they spread apart or not? Speaking of butt boxes, there we go. We need okay. close up on them in April, you good. We're good. So, relax that. And she has a little bit of external rotation, but it doesn't move forward like it's supposed to. It moves at the spine. For it moves at the spine up here instead. Mm -hmm. She also goes into hip flexion. She also goes into hip flexion, exactly. Right? And so here, relax that. Oh my golly. Yeah, her nominate doesn't move at all. I don't know if you can see this, but my fingers are literally not moving. So her nominate doesn't externally rotate. Right there. Does it internally rotate? Man, that side's really stuck. I don't feel it on either. Then I'm going to put my fingers at the SI joint, and I'm going to say, do I get a nominate extension or anterior rotation? 
By anterior rotation, I don't mean that I'm increasing lumbar lordosis. I'm not worried about that. It's not even part of the joint that I'm assessing, right? I'm looking at, does the PSIS move superior? Here's the sacrum. Does the PSIS move superior and rotate off of the sacrum? And none at all. That's all femoral extension right there. And then what are you feeling on your finger there? It's just a lot of stiffness. And then just watch this one now. That one extends. Can you see that? Stiffness. Don't you I said that word? <laughs> I meant restriction. <laughs> right, so watch again. Watch the difference between these two. So there's, I just, I can't budge anything. I get stuck. The door is not opening or closing right here. It's just stuck. But you can see her hip is moving up and down because I'm getting it from her hip socket. Femoral extension. But I'm not getting any anomaly. Okay? Yes? You said your fingers are on the sacrum, but are you also mm -hmm. So I'm actually right in between right here. So I have, you know, surface area on both the PSIS as well as the sacrum. Okay. You can feel that. May I touch your tailbone? Sure. That's what I was saying. <laughs> you know what is really funny? I asked her to volunteer for this without knowing that she was going to have her coccyx evaluated. No pictures of this, please. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So. Full well, informed consent goes a long way when you're touching people's tailbones. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Kind of show them what's going on and the okay. picture of all the muscles that attach. And yes. they're like, oh, okay. Here's Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> so, for her tailbone, her tailbone does, it's in a position of right rotation, and it doesn't spring well into left rotation. Okay? And then I'm going to check her. So it's twisted. This yep. Way. And the other interesting thing is, oh, sorry. <laughs> she has a couple of different, um, it's kind of like a little roller coaster. <laughs> so there's one part that extends, another part that flexes, and that spacing in between the two isn't um, very pliable. So I would say for her that she has an extended coccyx, and it's not flexing very well. So she has a flexion, joint mobilization, but restriction. Okay? What else am I missing? Femur. AP glide. So lots of different ways we can do that. I can block, I can block the femur and push the anominate, but then in my mind, I'm doing an anterior anomic glide, right? So I'm going to have her flip over onto her back. Okay. You like well? uh -huh. <coughs> and I'm just going to allow gravity to be my um, stabilizer and her nominate. Relax that. And I just want her to release everything. I can test her in her normal lie down phase, but I'm going to try and mimic what I remember from her standing. That's closer to what she does for standing. And fairly limited there. I could also block her anominate underneath, which I think I'd like to do because I think it's going to show you a little bit better. There we go. And she has a much, much stiffer and feel when I do that. I'll do it on this side as well. Thank you. So, oh. This side is really stiff. Yikes. Really, really restricted. Right. And it's more so on the upper portion than on the lower portion of that femoral head. I can also block underneath the anomalous and do the same thing. Of, if the patient has a preference, then it can be up to the patient. Okay? And if they're squirming a little piece of foam, it does wonders. Yeah. Line your side facing that way. And then I believe this is the last thing I'm looking at. Line your side flat. Uh, oh no, AP. sacrum. I forgot notation. And yeah, AP. Yeah, I'll do that too. Yeah, AP. Um, back on my side. No, like line on your side is great since we're doing this. I'm going to have her bring her bottom leg up. She's going to hold it with this hand. That way that I know that her lumbar spine isn't going to be involved with this motion. I'm going to take her up into relax. As much actual abduction as she can get, which is not a whole lot. Relax that down. If I don't let her compensate at all, that's what I've got for abduction. There is a really strong pull. So then if I do my inferior glide, watch this finger, that's what I've got. Greater trochanter right here. I'm hooking on top of it to get it to move in that direction. Inferior glide. Oh man. <coughs> 
that's really, really tight. Then we do the other side as well. I'm a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but surprised I, I made it here. How are you, how are you bringing it here? You're actually not a master. You're just filled with opportunities to get better. <laughs> that's why people love Bobby. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you are. <laughs> Um, for camera sake, there. Wow, that's a great picture. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Appreciate, please, how much more just active. Uh, sorry, osteokinematic motion she has. And now let's appreciate how much more orthokinematic motion. Here it comes. There it goes. Great. Much more osteo as well as orthokinematic motion in a um, inferior glide. I forgot to do sacral nutation and counter nutation. Let's go on your stomach again. We have a handy dandy little half foam roll that's cut out so the pubic symphysis rests right there. And then it blocks, there you go, it blocks the ASIS. So I'm not just doing this into a table, going, I don't know if I can't tell. I can't tell if it's moving out. That's right, because you're moving the table. <laughs> that's why you can't tell. <laughs> Students are so good with that. Not sure. Okay, we'll help you. All right, so sacral base. Um, I can do a couple different ways. I can just go through my fingers like so. I'd like to use a dummy thumb, let it relax there. I'm at the left sacral base. Used to all that. Yeah, where's the left? Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I'm looking at nutation on the left. It's fairly stiff. Nutation on the right actually moves pretty nicely. Does that feel more stuck to you on the left side? Yep. So look at that, super stiff. Relatively nice nutation on the right. Counter nutation. I'm going to go down to ILA with my right thumb and counter. Got a squish test, so we know that's not comfortable for her. And it seems that her left side doesn't like to move a whole lot because her left side is also not wanting to counter mutate. Okay? Lastly, then, lie on your back, please. Okay, what was the major, major dysfunction? Mutation on the left? It was actually the left side mutation and counter mutation. All right. Now, here comes the fun part. Hi. It gets better? It gets better. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the tailbone was fun. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go around your organs and just go all the way straight down to the front of your spine and press on that. It tends to be a little uncomfortable, so if you're too uncomfortable, just Again, if you want to look up at the scalp okay. right quick. Thank you. So we're going to squeeze all the organs, which are the hull tubes, unless there's some interesting stuff in them. But anyways, April is accessing the anterior aspect of L4, L5, and the discs to see why she's extended. Why is she? Is it she extended because she can't fold here? Or because it can't lengthen on the back? And people will tell me all the time, you can't do that. But you guys, this is a, as wide, sorry, as deep as her body goes. From the bottom of this, I'll put my hand underneath it because she's slightly lordotic. And from there, and now, hand across to my thumb, right? So that's all the deepness I have to do to get to her entire backside. If I now transpose this on top of George, spinous process, can you just hold on? Spinous process to there, I only have to go a couple inches to get to her anterior body. It's not that far. Okay? Obviously, she's got more soft tissue, out of tissue. Yeah, it's a little further in, but it's only a couple inches. So, all right. All right. So. Hey, but can you just close your uh, belly just a little bit for the camera sake? Yeah, for sure. Did you Sorry, Kat. Okay, bring your legs down for a second. You just want to show your show your belly. She's had some other surgeries here no too. No pictures, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm just going to bring her legs up to give these tissues a little bit of slack. I'm going to have her move over towards me because my arms aren't long enough. Just scoot your whole body over. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was just my knee. <laughs> You, you, that does happen though, right? Like you're working on a patient and your knuckle cracks, they're like, oh, I feel so good. Yeah. I like, I want that one, though. 
<laughs> yeah, that was before I knew how to do manipulations. Right? <laughs> okay, so relax that area. There we go. Now, she's got some other pressure system things going on that are going to make it a little bit challenging. Press it down there. Are you still okay? Okay. So, belly button's L3, right? If you're about an inch or so below that, you're at L4. If you're just above pubic symphysis, you're at L5. So I'm just going to sneak my way over there. And, yeah, L4 is pretty uncomfortable. L5 is really uncomfortable. And we get those... Please stop that. <laughs> okay. So, and that's all I need to do on that. If I'm going to do treatment, I'm doing a lot more. I'm doing soft tissue work on that. I'm doing clearing out all the mechanical things, superior to it, uh, superior, superficial to it, so that I can get down to that area and actually affect it. And then the fun part is, at some point, I can use my tibia now to lift her femurs up, and now her sacrum and anomena are now weight bearing. And I can actually press nicely on that. I'll get to that later. Okay. All right. And Bob has left the room. <laughs> I was about to say, and now, <laughs> Bob, what would you do on this patient? So, so do we feel like we have a pretty good understanding? I'm just going to write down all five of this. Okay. Yeah. So, pretty good understanding of her restrictions so far. Okay. So, let's actually go ahead and start treating them real quickly and just see what we find. I'd like to think that I'm going to make some nice changes on her because she is so restricted. Okay, so we're gonna go back to tailbone first. Oh, you know, we didn't do strength. Let's do strength real quick too. We didn't do any specific strengthening. Pull, uh, let's see, leg up. Put your leg up, right there, hold, don't let me move you. And watch her whole body, not just her leg, but watch her whole body response. That's really what I'm looking at. And this one, whoa. Really restricted on this right side. Good. I'm just doing this to show you guys. Fanny muscle test, right uh, hip flexor, three plus. Don't let me move your foot out. Good, don't let me move it in. Ooh. Left hip internal rotation, four minutes. Hold, don't let me move you. And hold, don't let me move you. And same thing on her right side. Okay, now let's go to Oh, external rotation. Uh, external more. Just on your face down. Okay. So here's the fun part, right? So we're going back to your tailbone. Is that all right? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you always start with your tailbone and find that all that? So, most of the time, yes. If I don't know the patient, they don't trust me. I have a weird vibe about the situation. Um, minor, none of those, right? Um, <laughs> So can, I, can I go right there? Yeah. Okay. So then what you'll also notice is, remember we had, and again, we talked about joint. Like we haven't even talked at all about her soft tissue restrictions. But I'm going to go and clear a little bit of the, remember that picture of the back of the sacrum and the nominate with all the okay. ligaments? I'm going to go and just clear some of those at the same time that I'm doing this joint work on her coxosacral junction. Sacrocoxygeal junction. And here we go. Do I do the movement part? Yeah. Okay. So in that PA world, the functional manual therapy, we, we do manual therapy with movement. Um, a little different than mulligan, but anyhow. And so we do, it, we do motion enhanced manual therapy. So what I would then say is I can pick from any different movement pattern that she has that I know she's dysfunctional because I know that's probably what her retraining needs to be, right? So if we look up on the board, we could say rotation would be a good thing for her femurs to learn how to do again, right? And I'm creating more movement at areas that are restricted so that those areas are going to learn how to move as well. So this is not muscle energy technique where I'm trying to do the opposite. I'm trying to actually, because remember, with functional manual therapy, it's move into the restriction. <coughs> All right, so if you take both heels and just gently roll them together. Thank you, and release. Good, and roll them apart all the way. Good, and roll them together. There we go, and apart. And then the fun thing is, after you've been treating for a while, can you just keep doing that? 
Yeah, you can start talking about, you know, how's your weekend? And what was the pool fun? And did you like revitalized when it's great? Right? Or I can just say, hey, I'm only going to give myself maybe 10 repetitions of the same thing, and then I can move on to the next thing. And I can clear a whole lot of tissues, which is why I'm telling you sometimes it only takes eight minutes to do everything that we just did on the board. All right. So I'm on, so I'm on the sacral coccygeal junction. So the coccyx is rotated up like this. I have my thumb or whatever I was using to get it to rotate left. And then my other hand is on the sacrum, the sacral of SI border. And getting